Hi, everyone. Most of you probably know that creating 3D content using multiple 3D applications can be extremely painful. And there are two main reasons for this. First, historically, there's been a lack of standardization for file formats. Industry standards like USD are beginning to mitigate this. You will hear more about this from Guido in a few minutes. Second, the actual process of moving data between 3D tools is slow, complex, and disruptive. In this talk, I'll be focusing on this second problem. Imagine trying to send a scene with dozens of models and hundreds of textures to a different application. You will have to manually export and import all of these files and make sure they are all hooked up correctly. Now, what if you want to make changes to the scene? You have to redo all of that all over again. And that sounds extremely complex. To solve this problem, we have created Substance 3D Connector. My name is Shweta Kutz. I'm a senior product manager at Adobe, focused on extensibility and interoperability, which includes Substance 3D Connector. So what is Connector? It is an open source framework that can seamlessly connect different desktop applications and transfer any type of data between them. It is designed with 3D workflows in mind, but it works with any data and any applications, not just substance tools. So how does this affect a user's workflow? Connector significantly reduces the amount of time spent on importing and exporting data from one application to another. It can transfer data without the need for intermediate files. It also provides enhanced workflow freedom, so you don't have to do everything in just one application, but instead choose whatever the tools that you want that are best for each task. From a technical perspective, Connector is data type and language agnostic. It is seamless and performant. It's locally based, so it's very secure. It works really well for offline workflows. Our goal for Connector is to empower developers to build new connections that can be used by thousands of users across the world. It is not limited to just Substance apps. Connector is distributed under Apache 2 license. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the simple user workflow. I have Substance Sampler here. And I'm authoring this wood material that I want to use directly in Unreal Engine. I'm modifying some of these parameters and going to expose them so I can tweak them later. By going to this export option, you can click on Send to Unreal Engine to send this asset over to Unreal. Now in Unreal, that asset immediately appears. You can use our Substance plugin to drag and drop and modify those exposed parameters. Now let's see what the end-to-end -end process looks like when sending assets through Connector. When a user clicks on Send to button to export an asset, we first save that asset to disk, generate a message, and send that message. On the receiver side, we receive that incoming message, and an event is triggered to import that asset. Now let's see what the architecture looks like. We have connector core module at the bottom, and we have different language wrappers on top of it. We support Python, C Sharp, C++, and Qt. And there are some external dependencies on the right side. These are needed to support some of the language modules. Each application will choose the most appropriate language module. In here, you can see Blender is using a Python module, whereas Sampler and Maya uses Qt. Now, let's see how easy it is to integrate Connector in your 3D application. 
At a high level, we have three stages. First, initializing connector. Second, sending and receiving data. And last, shutting down connector. Let's see what the code might look like. You don't need to understand all of the details here. We do have an example code in our GitHub repository. First, we declare some connector objects to interact with our underlying uh, code API, to handle importing and exporting files, and to handle system events. We initialize these connector objects. And then we set up event callbacks that can be triggered when certain events occur. For example, when you receive an asset, or when connection is established or closed. Now we are ready to open a TCP port and broadcast to other apps that we are available. This is what lets the other apps know that you are available so that they can show our app in their UI. When a user clicks on send to button, we first structure our data using JSON schema. In this example, we're setting the asset file path and the asset type, USD. Then we're going to convert the data into a JSON string. We're going to call send data function and just send it. On the receiving side, it's pretty much the same as send data, but it's basically in reverse. We first deserialize the message and do something with that data. Maybe load that data from disk. And then we call shutdown connect. That's pretty much all you have to do. Now, let's take a look at another user workflow here. Here I have Substance Painter. As you can see, this scene has a bunch of models and textures. By going to the Send To option, I can pick which connection I want to use. In here, I'm going to use Send To Blender. Now, on the Blender side, voila, the entire scene is imported in just one click. You can also see the node structure in the shader editor here, which you can use to further modify your scene. We're not stopping here. We are hoping to add live connection support so users can see changes instantly across all of connected apps. We're also planning to add some additional optimizations like shared memory and differential updates. Now that Connector is open sourced, I hope we can all work together to add connections to our favorite 3D tools. If you are interested, you can download Connector from our GitHub page here. And if you have any feedback or feature requests, please feel free to share with us on our Discord and Adobe community forums. Thank you. Now I'm going to hand it over to Guido, who's going to talk about OpenUSD and MaterialX. Hi, everyone. So I'll talk a little bit about a uh, uh, familiar topic, OpenUSD and uh, MaterialX. So this is the slide I've been showing probably for uh, uh, three years now. And I'm going to keep showing until we feel like you know, we get in a place where it really is working as the way it's supposed to, and it showed like really, really a full interval. But the idea fundamentally, uh, we're betting on it. We're uh, working on integrating it more and more in the various applications. Um, also, we're starting to really treat UST at the, at the cloud level. So every time we start um, using uh, e-commerce and other web-based and cloud-based uh, uh, systems, try to use UST, especially when it's at the authoring phase, or so like you're approving stuff during authoring phase, goes in whatever format to become UST, and even better if it's already UST, but it's not yet the case. And then we make GLTF or USDC depending on the target uh, device. So this is really becoming kind of a foundational piece, especially when we do things like you, upset on, uh, you upload an asset, you want to merge it with an environment, you want to bring some lights. All that actually happened by layering different uh, USD files. Uh, the various applications, uh, especially in the substance suites, uh, are starting to uh, adopt more and more USD, and also we start to see the use of Hydra coming online. So, uh, designer and sampler, like, this is work in progress. You know, we haven't got uh, to that point yet. And also, we have um, a new uh, project called Project Seashell. I'll talk a little bit about it. 
Um, but and see there is a couple of dotted lines we're trying to get after the facts, et cetera. So the idea ultimately is that the whole you know, product offering from Adobe, when it comes to 3D data, we want to make sure that UST is a premier uh, citizen, almost like a PDF equivalent in a way. In terms of the material strategy, I think, again, we talked about it in the past. For us, the real power is to combine UST, Material X, and uh, uh, SPSR, because they both brings really value to the, to the mix, and now even a, a standardizing around open PBR in terms of material model. In a way, it's part of Material X, so they kind of a, come, uh, come together. This is kind of a, uh, the idea ultimately having a, and that's what we're working toward, be able to provide tools that you can come do, you can do procedural texturing with a pixel processor like the Substance Engine and procedural shading in Material X. We think those two combined with a good standard for material model can be uh, really powerful. And so ultimately, what we want to see, like, you know, our Substance 3D, in a way, I shouldn't say just Substance 3, I should put, like, also potentially other uh, Adobe product, but it would be even better if there's even, you know, more and more third party that really adopt this kind of ecosystem where USD is the transport, material X is the material definition, and then you can even have this procedural texturing that comes along with it. Uh, here is the uh, screen grab, it's just work in progress right now. So this uh, is a designer now able to construct a material X graph. Uh, we still, still work in progress, so we, have, we don't have a release date yet, but, and the whole design of this is also based uh, on USD, so you'll be able to bring in a USD file uh, in non-destructive way, you can create a, a graph, the graph will actually represent a new layer. That can also go in Painter. Now Painter allows you to do an override uh, with the layer. So then if you have even a shot or animated uh, assets, it goes through it and Designer and Painter will apply a layer on top of it. So let's talk about the file format plugins. We announced it last year. At the time, it was not yet released. We released a few months later, but they're out there. Um, and this is kind of a, the idea that with these plugins, we can ingest from so many file formats and then also convert uh, to other uh, file formats. And this all based with this kind of extension to the USD core. Uh, there's a Git repo out there, it's pretty active. We start to see actually adoption. There is other USD file format plugins, so we wanna also reach out to them to see if we can collaborate uh, more with those so that we don't create too many of the same as much as possible. Currently, we are, uh, is within Adobe, but we're also thinking about how do we move this uh, a plugin potentially in a place like uh, uh, AOUSD or another uh, governing uh, uh, system that can allow even or uh, A-Swift, so then it can be even more broader and people feel like you know more uh, easy to contribute uh, uh, their changes and improvements. And where we are with the uh, repository now, we're, we're pretty active on it. You know, we we release monthly. Uh, we go against 2405. Uh, it's pretty much 08 just came out, so we try to be pretty active. Uh, the procedural plugin now SPSR has been changed. It was a recent feature that allowed you to drive a procedural plugin through actually attributes and not metadata. So we try to update to that. And also we start looking at Material X conversions. So for example, in the case of the GLTF, you open a GLTF file and we have you know, the classic USD preview surface, but also we create a Material X graph and we're gonna try as much as possible to look into uh, FBX as well, so then material X graphs become part of the scene that gets unfolded when you open uh, one of these um, file formats. And, like, and uh, lastly, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick show, we are now added the ability to import Gaussian splats. Obviously, you need a, a rendering engine and the proper shader, but if a PLY has uh, the data uh, that can represent the G splats, and it's not standardized yet, so that's why it's still an interim uh, workflow, and uh, this is an area also that I believe we should start as an industry working together to see if there is some formalization there. But anyway, supporting those and so people can uh, potentially visualize them. And here it is, I wanna just do a quick video of this uh, uh, new viewer. Uh, I think I showed it last year, we didn't say much what it was, but actually we're building a universal viewer, think about like an Acrobat reader for 3D equivalent. It's based entirely on USD, it takes advantage of all the plugins, and uh, the USD core is actually unmodified, and everything is added, plugin, uh, automatic UVs, all the other stuff, it will be added through a plugin system that USD provide. Uh, it has a, both a path tracer and an asterizer, and it's based on, it's a hydro delegate, uh, but this is a, a core Leclerc, is an internal uh, renderer. And uh, so here, again, you have access to, this is an example, in this case, just, I believe, is a USD file, so just nothing, obviously nothing new, but you can go and start selecting 
various format, like uh, I think in this case a GLTF. And I think I will switch to uh, in the video to uh, the rasterizer. The rasterizer and the path tracer come into the same render delegate, so they use exactly the same API. This is the SPSR plugin that is also can be a good example if you want to see how do you also do in-memory uh, data transfer when, when, we, when you generate the, the textures. And here again, it's fully procedural. So as you change the attributes, it re-triggers the computation of the texture map using the substance engine, changing some of the illumination property. I think it's changing the pattern in this case. And so what's nice about also this being open source, people can see it as an example to potentially create other. And finally, the PLY, I'm going to show um, the, uh, this is a Galician Splats that comes in, uh, again, uh, by reading a PLY with the additional data. So that's kind of a, a pretty much it for, so for the plugins. Uh, for the viewer, um, I just want to give it a little bit of a plug. Um, it is, oh, how do I switch to the next? Uh, here we go. Uh, I was supposed to be discreet, but I said, well, I'll put up a, a QR code there. I uh, really welcome uh, people to try it out. Uh, again, the, this is going to be a, again, a, free, a, a free player. And the idea is really to bring, uh, make it easy for everybody, especially on various platforms, to bring 3D data. Um, and uh, we welcome people testing it from a very simple asset. I'm not sure you want, you know, you want to try to load right away Moana Island, but uh, technically it's a USD, uh, it's like a kind of a USD view kind of a conceptually, but it's a lot simpler as a, a more of a user interface. And again, it's multi-platform. And that's it. Thank you very much.